Good afternoon. So thrilled to be here today, this fantastic, beautiful day and such an inspiring event. It is insane how we managed to connect so closely, even though we're actually virtually together today. I hope you feel the same way. My name is Ksenia Vitisova, and I currently live and work in Espo, Finland, but my cultural heritage is quite diverse, being Armenian, Russian, growing up in Soviet Union. I am a long-term participant and great supporter of women in tech cause and movement. One of my contributions being establishing the XR Women Nordic Initiative for ladies in XR to connect together. Feel free to comment in the chat while we are talking and I'll try to pick up some questions, but our time is rather limited. So I invite you to join our Q&A session after this chat. So today I have a wonderful guest with me, Jessica Lindholm, who's the Director of Competence Development in the service market at Volvo Trucks. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Senia. Good to be here. <laughs> nice to have you here. So we're going to talk about immersive training and collaboration. But before jumping into this topic, I'd like to first ask you to give a little bit of background and how did you end up in your current role? What type of influences did you have along the way? Thanks a lot, Senia. Well, after graduating from mechanical engineering at school, I was a bit curious about the field of business administration and economy that I had chosen not to study. <clears throat> and I had the opportunity to work within this field for some time. And however, pretty fast realized that I actually made the right choice in, uh, in the first place, choosing technology that to me is a lot more fun than compared to economy. And uh, living in Gothenburg, you know, it is the location of the head office of the, the giant company Volvo Trucks. It was a, a great opportunity for me to, to enter this giant company. So back in early 2001, I started off as, uh, as a certification engineer within Volvo Trucks. It's a role that I've never heard of up until that point in time. But it was uh, great fun and I learned a lot about our products and the way we work with our trucks. So I remained within this field of the company for let's say 10, 12 years and um, worked with various roles, but mainly within the field of project management. So I, um, I really, really enjoyed that, that part of uh, of the introduction to, to Volvo Trucks. But then I changed from, uh, from developing our products into instead developing the people taking care of our products out there in, in instead. So I'm speaking about the, the retail network with the different workshops of Volvo Trucks where we service our customers. So I've been, I was still a project manager. We managed uh, a training event, but in the format of a competition, we call it Vista. And uh, this competition target the people who service the, the retail network, the technicians, but also the, the um, customer receptionists, people in the, in the dealer network. And uh, we had the opportunities to try new technologies in this project. Since uh, 2016, I've been the group manager for technical training. So the training event Vista, that's one of the training solutions. But in technical training, we develop and deliver technical training solutions to the technicians out there in various kinds. And uh, in one of the development, that's actually where, where you and I met, Senia, for one yes. of the first times. Yeah, Jessica, what a wonderful journey. And uh, I'm always thrilled to hear about engineering backgrounds because uh, that's something that really interests me as well. But in my career, I haven't had a chance and learning to be yet. an engineer, but I worked yet exactly work <laughs> alongside with them quite often. So uh, yeah, quite a lot of admiration from my perspective towards your journey. Could you please tell a little bit about the case that you have just mentioned, the one which includes immersive technology and uh, training? Yes, I can. I mean, it was it was last uh, last spring actually in. Uh, in Volvo Trucks, we are constantly developing our products. And uh, in spring last year, we launched a totally new electric truck. 
uh, electric driven truck it's uh, it's a it requires another kind of competence of the real uh, retail network and um, by the time of the launch of this product we also got the pandemic meaning that we could not ask people to travel to get this uh, competence by what we normally do physically we meet face to face and we transfer the knowledge in in a classroom where we actually meet next to the truck this uh, put put us in a in a need of an alternative way of transferring this knowledge and with the vista competition where we've had the opportunity to, to try vr the virtual reality environment we had some experiences to uh, to let's choose this environment for the knowledge transfer of electric competences because it it puts another kind of of need to our technicians out there so together with you we uh, we uh, developed a multi-user virtual environment for training purposes in uh, in in vr so that was uh, quite uh, or still is uh, a very, very um, fanta or a fantastic project that we've done together. And uh, I can really see this is here to, to stay, actually. Yeah, the pandemic did not only bring some negative effects, but it has really accelerated the adoption of the new digital ways of doing things and the oh, new yes. ideas. So it's really great to hear about one of the top examples that we have seen. And from your perspective as well, to adopt the immersive learning and to share it globally with the workshops. Um, could you share your thoughts about the actually positive impact of immersive technology and the virtual reality in this case that can uh, be showcased in the training operations and in general for the user experience as well? Yes, so for, uh, for the environment as such, um, when you are in the uh, common room in VR, you feel like this is your real life. This is uh, not just another um, game or um, this is this is real to you when you are there. And th there are studies showing that um, the brain doesn't really understand whether it's for real or not. You've maybe heard about uh, um, f frightened of, of heights or something, even though you know you are on the flat floor, if uh, the ground disappears around you, you really feel like you are up in the air. And this is the same way when it comes to, to knowledge transfer. So studies shows that you um, using VR, it's a really good tool for knowledge transfer. So this is um, yeah, this is what what we can lean back towards that we really do believe this is a, a good way forward. So I could see uh, we can gather people from around the world. We have a reference group from the Volvo group, which is worldwide. So we have representatives from various areas of Europe, but also from Australia and, and other parts of the world. And you feel really close. You do not really need to to travel to feel that you are in the same room. You, you save um, time and environmental <laughs> impact. You, you save uh, um, lots of things with that positive aspect of VR. Um, speaking about gen generally in, um, in immersive uh, technology for trainings, uh, if we compare to not too many years ago, we have come from like site permissions and approval processes and expensive license cost of tools into a more open and inclusive way of, of working, a more collaborative way of working with a, a very clever tools for that that is uh, available to all of us. So we, we've really seen a, a big change when it comes to, to openness and uh, area to collaborate in a more efficient and, and fun way. I'd say. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. And this idea of uh, the new way of, of inclusiveness using the virtual environments, it resonates a lot. Because I think previously you have also mentioned uh, your experience with avatars and uh, how 
they um, allow it to either self-express or they showcase that everyone is quite equal. So you don't have differentiators. So you can be from anywhere in the world. You meet all together in that one and the same virtual environment. And you have this inclusive collaboration type of feeling where you achieve a goal together. You work towards learning new things together and performing better. Um, That's right. What, uh, what kind of... Um, yeah, what kind of experience do you personally have with the virtual reality? How has that, uh, um, how do you find it? Like, do you find it brings uh, additional benefits for working in training? Yes, but from the personal perspective, is there anything that resonates uh, specifically personally with you and uh, your own experience? I could, um, I mean, I, I really feel there is no, difference between uh, where you are from you uh, with the avatar like you mentioned you um, you have the same hat you have the same gloves and uh, uh, the face is an avatar and they all look the same if you prefer you you um, um, you have your your name written in, in the air and uh, you could you could hear like you you really were in this environment. If you are next to me or to the right, I can hear you from the right. Um, if there are many others in the room, I can hear from where they are and understand who they are by their voice. Uh, so speaking about diversity and, uh, and uh, inclusion, this um, you, you, can, you can choose whatever avatar really, but this is uh, uh, the experience I have in, uh, in VR is that everyone is equal to to this environment and if you are optimistic or positive or, or welcoming a new technology this uh, this step to enter a new technology like vr is new to many of us it's um, its step is is quite low it it doesn't take much to embrace this one if if you allow and and uh, em embrace that this is a new way of working and I, I have this experience from from this setup that everyone has been really curious and uh, willing to try new things and see the opportunities it um, it brings. So that is um, yeah, <laughs> that is what I've seen at least. Uh, that that sounds very very interesting, and it's great that curiosity is driving the adoption of the new technologies. So that's, um, I believe that's exactly how it should be. We should explore the opportunities and find the ones that bring the best value. Um, I'd like to ask you one question because you have um, in Volvo Trucks, you have global network of workshops where you need yeah. to provide um, a training. And uh, of course uh, it, is, uh, it is relevant that there are different uh, cultural differences in different regions and uh, if we talk about uh, Sweden or Germany or Australia uh, have you noticed any type of uh, distinct differences in terms of being open to trying the new technology being open to uh, bringing this virtual reality into the training process and um, if you have noticed what are those I have not noticed a change uh, depending on from which country you are or from what kind of uh, uh, role you may be in. It's more of, a, of the different differences in, in um, the personal interest, I have to say. It's more if you are welcoming change and uh, is acting open to new technology, um having a um yeah a welcoming mindset that that has been uh, the the common uh, the commonality uh, independent of um, where you are from so I, I haven't i haven't experienced that uh, that difference from uh, from a country or nationality aspects um you, you, i mean we, we can be in the same family having having uh, um, very different um, and view viewpoints upon things, and uh, I think if if you are welcoming and open to this, this um, this is more value value valuable compared to where you're from. To me, it hasn't exactly. shown any difference from that. 
that pretty much confirms uh, my experience as well that globally all over the world we, there are people who are interested and who are driving this forward so it's it's great to hear that you had a similar positive experience in, in that mm -hmm. respect mm -hmm. and um, I, we have uh, still 10 minutes and I'd like to ask you a question which maybe requires a little bit more time or contemplation but I believe it is uh, ultimately one of the most important questions for our session today because um, new technology is appearing quite often and constantly so we can't be settled on AI and machine learning and we can't believe that we understand it fully we can't be settled on the virtual reality as we have it right now because the, there is the next idea there is the uh, open XR there is 5g coming there are all those technologies that are being rolled out constantly so uh, um, I want to learn from you and I want to understand what is your view and please share it with our audience as well. What type of skills or what type of um, mindset should we adopt in order to stay successful in whatever roles we currently have so that we are prone for the future, so that we are future proof in a way? How should we treat this constant uh, technological advancement? And are there any practical things that have helped you to? have such a great career and adopt the new technologies along the way? That's a, a big question. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, I mean, with, with like, like you mentioned, a number of changes uh, that uh, we have experienced and that we have still in front of us, I think rather than to see changes as a threat, um, we, we, we have to, embrace it if we have the the skill to embrace change and see upon its opportunities or advantages we can probably overcome whatever threat or the what, what you might be uh, frightened of that with the unknown because there is always something unknown in in changes and if we can overcome that and face the uh, the advantages and and um, feel confident in that i think that skill is uh, is a huge advantage if you if you can if you can embrace change um, with the um, with the, I, I mentioned the 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 more easy way to collaborate with the more open and transparent tools that we have uh, it, it it still goes back into the, the human connections we need to to cooperate and you do that between people <laughs> and that is uh, that's where you need to uh, to um, to be open to diversity to in to include people that are as much unlike you <laughs> as possible sometimes to have the different viewpoints to to understand what's best for you or whatever target you are aiming for so to be uh, to be inclusive to uh, to others viewpoints it's another skill that i see is uh, is important and it doesn't matter whether that is um, uh, in vr or in in real life so to speak it doesn't matter what medium you are you are in we still need to to have a good in interactivity across humans <laughs> because that that is um, key in, in, in everything I, I must say and of course confidence to to believe that whatever you take on that that you trust and and, and uh, have the confidence in yourself and trust what whatever you are convinced with this is uh, this is true for you you will always face a skeptic people around you but have the confidence to, to really believe what you believe and, and feel confident in that jessica such delicious words of wisdom it's, <laughs> uh, it's fantastic to hear like exactly you bring up confidence and uh, you bring up inclusivity and being able to include the people with completely different viewpoint this I, I also believe is ultimately very, very important skills that we have to retain no matter what the future brings. And um, maybe worth sharing as a piece of advice from my personal uh, professional experience that even 
having non-technical background as education does not prevent you from working with technical mm -hmm. areas and bringing this human perspective and user experience in digital service is designed in technical areas is very, very important. And I had to, to go and learn some technical things in order to be on the same level of understanding with the technical teams and the engineering teams. But it did work out quite well. And I believe that learning as we go, whatever skills that we realize we need is very big advantage that we currently have in the digital age because like in matrix we can load pretty type pretty much any type of knowledge that we realize might be currently missing but that doesn't mean that it's going to miss forever so you go you go out you get what you need you get mentorship you get support and you can bring it to your work and personal life as well so very inspiring and um I know you have previously mentioned also something that resonated with me quite a lot about the next generation of learners, the next generation of doers, and the uh, generation of which currently we consider as kids or young adults who are already digitally, digital natives. And uh, you had interesting experience. Could you please share how, for example, your kids had interacted with the virtual reality? How did that um, and what did that teach you? Yes, and I, and I mean uh, um, the the way uh, the way I see uh, like two years old, yes, uh, with a smartphone, it's so natural, yes, to uh, to to swipe, and you it, it's they they come to my my laptop screen and and uh, try to scroll, and it's not a touch screen, so I wonder why doesn't it swap? So it's an it's a behavior that is so natural uh, for them. But my my kids are a little bit older. Um, so my nine-year-old, um, uh, when she first tried VR, she just entered the, the Google headset and and uh, looked around like, wow, this is cool. And what is that? And just very, very nettly from the first second, just started to interact like this is this is just a, a, another environment. It's virtual, but to her, it was the world. Um, it, it, it comes in yeah in less in less than a second and if i um i mean the the 18 year old when speaking about uh, what digital tools etc they are using they are the ones entering the the workforce now and they are expecting this way of, of working so we need to to welcome them into the the workforce because they they will be the ones taking over um and and more and more of them will be in, at, at our colleagues so so it's uh, it really feels like uh, we as we as need to embrace this and uh, be prepared that this is here to to stay and we need to be the role models to mm. to develop this even further no this uh, this is great and thank you very much jessica for sharing your thoughts sharing your great experience in adopting the new technology mainly the immersive technology currently in your work and the processes and the driving these initiatives in such a big company as Volvo Trucks. And uh, we have currently a few minutes uh, left in the session. Once again, I, I thank all the audience for being here and for listening to our discussion. And I want to invite you to join both Jessica and myself in the Q&A room. You can access it by pressing a button underneath your live stream uh, in the browser. And um, we'll, uh, we'll try to address the questions that you have put in chat. I scrolled through it and picked up at least a few. And feel free to answer or to ask them again. And at least we have one topic that we haven't touched upon just yet about the potential limitations or the challenges that uh, Jessica and team have faced on the way and how to overcome this. So we will start maybe with this question and then continue taking some from your side. So Jessica, any final words from your side? Well, uh, I would just say if you have, if you are really confident or convinced by something, I really encourage you to uh, trust that feeling, have the courage to trust yourself. You will always face the people with skepticism, prove them wrong and uh, go for it. Thank you. And with that, I thank all of you and we'll see you soon in chat. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye. Thank you.